Hi everybody, it's me, Kendall, your teen services librarian here at the Blue Hill Library. I'm here for another book talk. You might have noticed that we changed the day a little bit. Um, it just worked out better for Monday afternoon, so hopefully you'll all be able to join and see all the great books that I'll be talking about. This week, I've changed it up a little bit, so I'm not talking about just one novel or one graphic novel. I'm going to be talking about several different manga books or Japanese graphic novels. I personally really love manga. I have since I was a teenager. They're really great stories. The artwork is really unique and there's so much to choose from. Like within manga, there's so many different genres and so many different stories that you can choose from. There's really something within that category for everyone. And I'm going to be showcasing that a little bit today. Um, let's see. I accidentally left some sticky notes <laughs> for myself on this one. But the first one that I want to talk about a little bit is this one called My Hero Academia. This is by Kohi Horikoshi. I actually didn't think that I would like this one, <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest. I have a tendency to not go for the series that have become really popular. There are a lot that come to mind when I think of things like that, like Naruto, um, Bleach, which I did like Bleach a little bit, but Naruto in particular, One Piece, Dragon Ball Z, those are all big popular series and I see why people love them. They have great stories, but I just never got into those ones. So I was a little hesitant about My Hero Academia because right now this is a really popular series, the show and the books, but I figured I'd give it a shot just to see what it's about. And I actually loved it. This is a really fun manga. I have the second volume. It just came back. So I'm going to be reading that one soon. Um, but this is a fun series that takes place in a world where people have superpowers but they're called quirks so most people are born with quirks some are more powerful than others and a lot of people hope to become a hero when they grow up and then there are others that become villains while some people just use their quirks as everyday whatever but you can actually become a hero as a career in this series. So there's a school to become a hero and that's what the main focus of the story is. Our main character is Deku, which is a nickname um, that just kind of sticks to him. And his dream is to be a hero like the most famous hero, All Might, who you can see here on the front. However, Deku is quirkless. He doesn't have any powers of his own. He's been waiting his whole life for a power to show up and he just doesn't have one. But he ends up running across the path of All Might and helping with the situation and showing that he has a really heroic heart. So he gets an opportunity to become a hero and gets to go to the Hero Academy in this book. It's really sweet. Deku is an adorable character. He's just, he's very much like the underdog archetype and he's really heartfelt and thoughtful and really cares about people. He's very emotional, so there's a lot of crying, but there are a lot of really funny moments in this book too and things that you wouldn't really expect from some of the characters. The only negative I have to say about this manga is that some of it, like there's so much going on in the panels that it's a little bit difficult to tell what's going on. Um, it's kind of rough. Like this is a perfect example. Like there's just so much happening that it is kind of hard to tell really what's going on. But other than that, I would definitely recommend this if you're into things about superheroes or underdog stories. I think My Hero Academia would be a great option to try. Um, for those of you who haven't read manga before, they are actually read in the traditional Japanese format. So 
that means they open backwards to how we would normally open our books here in the US. So just keep that in mind if you wanna give it a try. Usually in the back, there's some sort of warning to tell you <laughs> if you open it the wrong way. So My Hero Academia. The next one I want to talk about, we have the first two volumes of here at the library and it's actually become a favorite of mine, but it's called Silver Spoon. This is by Hiromu Arakawa, which you might recognize, if, if you're a manga fan or a fan of anime, you might recognize the art style. Get a little bit closer so you can look at these. This is the same creator that writes Full Metal Alchemist. So I'm a big fan of Full Metal Alchemist. I've loved that series since I was in high school. When I realized I wanted to read this one anyway because it just seemed like it would be a really fun one to read. But when I realized that it was by the same creator as Full Metal Alchemist, I was even more excited to give it a try. And I can definitely say this one lived up. I actually have loved this one so much that I bought the series for myself <laughs> because I wanted to be able to read them all and I wanted to keep them. Um, but this series is about our main character, um, Hachi Ken, which is right here on the front cover. He is a high school student who makes like a totally crazy decision and essentially runs away from home to go to a high school away from his family, which is an agricultural high school. And he has no background in agriculture or farming or anything like that at all. Um, he just had a bit of a rough patch. So he wanted something new. He goes to this agricultural school and starts to kind of, he goes into the dairy science program and starts learning about animals and how to interact with animals and things on the school grounds. It's like a college campus. So he stays there at the dorms and they have live animals there that the students work with and learn how to care for and um, potentially use for food and things like that. It's really funny. Poor Hachi Ken like had no idea what he had signed up for. <laughs> So he's had, he has some pretty interesting interactions with the animals in this series. Um, it's really, for the most part, quite lighthearted, but it's also pretty educational. There's, it's all focused on farming and the information in here is accurate because the creator went through so much time researching farming and learning how to understand it and learning about the animals and things like that. So you can learn quite a bit about farming stuff in here, which is cool. But it's also just got that really great slice of life feel. There's no like looming huge thing that you're waiting for to happen. You're just kind of going through each day with Hachiken and getting to know his fellow classmates. There's a great array of classmates in this book uh, a little bit a lot of different personalities and there's a little bit for everyone I'm really really enjoying it and I'm hoping that I'll be able to order some more the follow the rest of the volumes for the library um, but unfortunately they're back ordered right now so it might be a little bit however volumes one and two are here and I definitely recommend giving them a shot Next, I want to talk about My Brother's Husband by Gengoro Tagame. This is a short series. It's only two volumes, this being the first one. It's about um, the, well, the main characters are all on the cover here, but he lives in Japan with his daughter, and this is his brother-in-law who was married to his brother who passed away. So this is kind of a bittersweet story about the main character coming to terms with his brother being gay and then his brother passing away and not having really spent any time with him or his brother's husband. Um, and his brother's husband un just randomly shows up at his house one day and they start to get to know each other. I don't want to say too much about this because I don't want to ruin it for anybody. It's really a sweet, sweet story. I highly recommend it. 
Um, it's, a, it's a very emotional series and I would love to see more from this creator. So if you're looking for a good LGBTQ manga or story, I definitely recommend this one. The daughter is a fantastic character. She was probably my favorite character, just absolutely delightful. And I think um, anybody can enjoy this one. The next one I'm going to talk about is a series called Silent Voice. This is the first two volumes. We have the rest of the series with the exception of the fourth volume, which has somehow been back ordered. <laughs> so hopefully that will be here soon. Um, this is a really interesting and unique manga. Um, it's about these two main characters, Shoya and Shoko, who go to school together. Shoko is deaf and Shoya is a bully. So in this first volume, we see a lot of Shoya bullying Shoko as she's the new student and of course she can't hear, so he makes fun of her for that, which is really hard to read about and see. And then the rest of the class, you know, gets involved too and they treat Shoko really poorly. Um, this is when they're in I, I believe it starts when they're in elementary school or middle school and then it goes into when they're in high school and Shoya is considering taking his own life, which is a very serious topic. This is a very serious series. So just be aware that that is a part of this. Um, he like I mentioned, is considering taking his whole life as he gets older and goes to seek out Shoko so he can apologize to her for his actions in the past when things take a bit of a turn and he starts to see life a little bit differently for what it is and how it's been and starts to change a bit as a person. Um, I won't get into volume two because that might give too much away, but I will say this series is super powerful. I definitely recommend it. Um, the representation of having a deaf character is really well done and wonderful. And Shoko is just so sweet. I love her. And then seeing what Shoya is going through after the decisions that he made when he was younger is just really intense. Um, but lovely to see and gives you hope for more real life situations. The last series that I wanna talk about is another personal favorite of mine. I've loved this one since high school. It is called Drama Con. This is a great series for like big anime fans. This is the Omnim, Omnim um, Nimbus. I don't know why that word is so hard for me to say, <laughs> but it contains all three volumes of the series. They did this for the anniversary. I believe it was the 20th anniversary, but I could be wrong. I'd have to double check. So again, all three volumes are in here, but this follows a main character named Christy as she attends anime conventions. She's an um, aspiring manga artist, so she does her own series, like it's an indie manga series, and she goes to these conventions to promote it and sell it to fans or people who might be interested. There's a lot of talk about cosplay in here and other things that take place at anime conventions, but at its core, it's also a bit of a romance. Christy meets someone at the convention and they have interactions all three years that they go. There's a lot, there's so much to love in this series. And there were definitely some stressful moments for me the first time I was reading this. I will say just as a heads up in the first volume, there is a boyfriend who is a bit abusive. So if that, that could be upsetting, I just wanna warn you that that is in there. Um, but overall, this is a really lovely series. The characters are just delightful. Um, I also have to say that the creator Svetlana Shmakova is so lovely. I got to meet her um, years ago now 
and she was really, really sweet. She has a few other series out that are um, considered juvenile, so like middle grade, um, that might be familiar. One of the first one I believe is called Awkward, but she has a really fun art style and she's a really good storyteller, so I definitely recommend this one. That's everything that I have for you this week. I will say we have way more um, manga books than what I showed you here, but this was just a taste that I wanted to give you and some recommendations that I think you might like. If you've read any of these or are hoping to read any of them, I'd love to hear from you about it. I love talking about books, as you all know. That's why I'm here. So feel free to reach out to me anytime. You can email me. My email address is on our website or just stop by the library. I'm here during the week and would be happy to talk to you about these books. But until next time, I hope you are enjoying your summer and happy reading. Bye.